Why is my shirt ripped? Because we just got done talking about Stellaris Infinite Legacy. Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Hi there, YouTube. Welcome back for another Thoughts from the Corner special Kickstarter edition preview. And today, we got a doozy here. We're going to be talking about Stellaris Infinite Legacy. This is an upcoming Kickstarter coming from Academy Games. That's not the name of it, is it? Yes, Stellaris Infinite Legacy. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's based on the Stellaris game from Paradox Entertainment. It's an immensely popular uh, 4X game. And this is going to be... Two to four players, 90 to 150 units to play. And this is what's called an infinite legacy game, which means it is going to be legacy in the fact that as you play the game, you're going to have a really concrete uh, effect on the game, but not in a way that's going to destroy the game or ruin the game. And also, I want to mention this right from the jump, not in a way that makes it seem like you're never going to want to play it a game. I got that impression. Because we mm -hmm. played uh, Rise of Queensdale, yep. which is my favorite legacy game of all time. But let's be honest. We don't want to revisit that. Nope. Same well, I mean, maybe maybe years down the road. <laughs> Once or <laughs> twice. Reprint it. We, I mean, there were other paths we could have taken. But, but no, I mean, it's actually, we could still keep playing the game, but it would be... Oh, oh, like yeah. a continuation. No, no, no. That's not what this one is going to be. Also, the other thing that I want to mention is it has this... There's so much to talk about here. Like, this game is absolutely exploding. So we have not played the game, but we sat down for about an hour and a half, and the designer of the game walked us through absolutely everything, which is just... A staggering amount of stuff in this game, uh, but it's going to be played over the course of six games. So generally, over six or seven games, your race is either going to succeed and be spectacular, or it's going to die off. But then they might come back later in play and in, in cards and in yeah, it's like it's like the the echo of things that you've done can pop up in later games, and you'd be like, oh yeah, that was that Dyson sphere we created. <laughs> it, it so there's so much we're going to be bouncing all around this thing. So let's just talk first and foremost about what they're really trying to go for here, which is streamline. They are trying to streamline the 4X game, which is, is quite... It's not easy. Not uh, so the first thing I want to talk about, which really intrigued with me, and we're going to have pictures up for a bunch of this stuff, is this tray system they have, where each player is going to have their own unique tray, where you are going to be doing your things, you're going to be managing your resources, it's going to go nicely back into the box with a cover that goes onto it, so you can go back to it from game to game to game, which is absolutely genius in my thoughts. Uh, and there's a screen as well. But it's not just a typical screen. Like, it's like, oh, look, don't look at my stuff screen. Yeah. It's actually going to have your race in there. Do you want, do you want to talk a little so, about So, yeah, it's got these uh, card uh, basically card sleeves in there that you're going to be putting your cards in there. And that, that tells your race, you know, the, the selections that you've made that you've created this race. Because the race is unique to you. You can create your own. Oh. Every, every little aspect of it. Like, you just get a <laughs> deck of cards and apparently you can just choose, oh, I want this and this and this. But there's certain things that you can't use at the same time. And normally that's really annoying in a game. But what they've done is uh, any of those options that it's you can have one of two options, oh, yeah. it's on either end of the card. So you just flip the card over. So you literally can't accidentally choose something that you're not supposed to. Amazing. So so you're going to have all your cards and uh, stacked up and... You're going to have these events that you're doing, and it's going to keep track of those because those will be slid into the top of it, and uh, all of your, your resource tokens are down in the bottom, I so you can just see part. it, everything. Uh, okay, so I got to tell you about yeah, what I thought ahead. was the coolest part, which I think was called the, the pick four, I think it was either pick four or pick five system, where you talk about creating your own race. Yeah. It essentially is, here's a huge list of perks you could have, but it's not just perks because it's like this perk is going to cost you four four of your points which means you also are gonna have to put in some negatives potentially if you want to get that awesome yeah. purse so you're going to be putting in negatives and positives to really create your own thing in addition to the the pre-standard ones because if you play twilight imperium and we probably should have mentioned that like it's, it's one of our favorite games of all lot, time yeah. like we we have gone together on weekends just to play it together it's we literally played it twice in a day yes which, if you've ever played it is a monumental feat so <laughs> just the idea of creating your own god so nice yeah um, but, but let's keep going because there's so much cool stuff to talk about here. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about now, and we're going to talk about the gameplay as well, but this has drop in, drop out functionality, and it doesn't sound like a giant pile of crap because you could drop in and drop out, I believe in Charterstone, but it was, it was clunky. This one has kind of a cleaner system where depending on how old your era is, because I mentioned you're probably going to play about six or seven games with your race before you move on to another race. Uh, well, you don't have to. Oh my God, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. There's so much going on in this game. Um, so in that, 
uh, oh, oh, you can drop it. So let's just say JM decides to join us and she's arrow one, which means the victory conditions are going to be easier for her to achieve if, where we're on arrow four because we're essentially going to have to do like four times. Yeah, it's like she has to do, she only has to do one of the cards and we have to do four of the cards because we're on arrow four. Yes. And the other thing that I want to mention before I forget, because I think it's really cool, is they have a cool system in place to make it not so confrontational it's still gonna be confrontational this is a 4x game but they have victory conditions where you're helping people out which are you gonna help out the level four person you're gonna help out jan over here so it seems like it's a really nice sort of catch-up mechanism uh and i just love the idea of drop in drop out like oh adam can't make it this week we can still play it he'll pop back up we'll be era five he'll be era three but it's not a huge deal which i, I think is really cool uh the other thing is I think that's also super thematic because you're going to have some races that are more advanced than others. And, you know, that's what would happen in if we found life out there somewhere, you know, like we wouldn't be the top. We'd be at the bottom and there'd be other ones to help us. I, I love that idea. <sighs> There's so much cool to talk about this. So the next thing I want to know about. So let, we've all been in that game. We've all been in that game where. Where it's like, oh, I'm going to lose this game. I'm going to get my face absolutely destroyed in this game. This one will let you say, oh, you're not happy with how things are going? You just re-roll a new character. It's like, just, <laughs> but your old character's still in the game as like an AI, which makes sense realistically because there's all these different people in the galaxy. And that's such a cool idea. <laughs> um, okay, won't destroy pieces. Completely replayable. non -linear st uh, So it's a non-linear story, uh, story, which you talked about a little bit, where just different events are going to happen. And when he said events, I was like, okay, how many events were we talking about? He said there's going to be like 500 event cards is what he said. And 500. There's, and, and I want to, on this final notice, it is just double, double-sided of just all the things I scribbled. That, <laughs> so there's something called that they're calling the key and lock system. I don't want to bury the lead here, but the key and yeah. lock system looks so cool. So that thing in games where it's like, oh, this card says if I can have this card over here and I can put them together, it'd be super amazing. You're like, that's never going to happen. But there's always that tantalizing taste that, oh, it could happen. This has hundreds <laughs> upon hundreds <laughs> upon hundreds of those. And as you progress through the game, as you level up, not your one tech tree, but also your mm -hmm. tech tree and your tradition tree, and you're going to be leveling up your ships. Just, <laughs> yeah. there, you're going to start unlocking... Oh, customizable ships. Yes, customizable <laughs> ships. There's so much in this game. And it all seems so streamlined. Um, focus. Focus, Daniel. Focus. Back to it. Get to okay. the list. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so there's a lock and key system. It looks amazing. Uh, so games equal an era, and when you win an era, you're going to get a reward, which will then go into the next game. Uh, there also is this really cool system that I like where it really kind of, I don't, we haven't played it, but it feels like it's going to be cool with creating the galaxy where as you explore, and we'll get more into how the 4X works in the game, because we are going to cover everything, hopefully. Um, you don't actually start in a fixed position. Like, I start here, you start here. Here's the center of the galaxy. And if you happen, when you explore, if you happen to roll a certain number or below a certain number, then you'll start to get connected to the middle of the galaxy, which might not necessarily be bad. No, it could be very bad. And you get to choose where in that center that you can attach to. Yes. <laughs> I just thought that was just, really cool. Yeah, really awesome. But that one does not stick from game to game to game, which I think is a very... It doesn't make sense that much thematically, I don't think, but I think from a game design sense, if you were stuck right in the middle, that would suck. If you were yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to be stuck here for the next five turns, I'm going to re-roll. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm always right next to him. Our home worlds are touching each other. All right. That would be lame. That would be. <laughs> Let's talk about the big thing, the simultaneous play. We, we alluded a little bit to it, so how is that actually going to work? And it's really quite a clean system. There's going to be four things you're going to be doing. You're going to be exploring, uh, which is where you're going to research check. And as you research check, you earn more tech to unlock. I really like how that system works. So essentially, uh, you'll start with this deck of cards. And then if you, you build the tech, it will say, hey, you now have this card and this card mixed into your tech deck that you could potentially get. Um, so when it's simultaneous action, let's pretend me and uh, Adam were playing. Uh, I would get to pick whether or not I want to explore, exploit, expand, or X politics, which we'll talk a little bit later, but that's how they got rid of exterminate because you're not going to exterminate every single turn, which makes sense, but you can still exterminate during that turn. So you would select one of those four you were doing. I would select one of those four I were doing and you would grab this big board, like this big custom board. So it's like one of the four actions I want to do is going to be one of the four X's. I put it down in front of me and it's going to have everything on there. It's like here, it's kind of almost worker placement esque. It is worker placement, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you got your little tokens that you're putting on there. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's going to say the resources you spend and the rewards you get. But when you flip over this big, chunky board, 
it's a huge player aid specifically just for the explorer the exploit which i thought is such a good use of space mm -hmm. like i love a great player aid card and that got me excited but in a given round you're going to do all four of those once but it's you might be exploring while i'm exploiting but then we might do the expand the next time at the same time uh, I thought it was a really clean system. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that system, but I wanted to explain that a little bit. So exploring is how you're going to get your tech, and also it's how you're going to be expanding your board. You're going to colonize different planets, and there's a whole mining system. We didn't, we didn't even have time to get into the mining system, but it was really cool. Like, you, uh, Okay, so then we get to exploit. Uh, that's where you're going to build on planets, uh, and you can build your own star base. You can build your own construction ship and the ships the ships yeah the ships are so cool you're gonna be able to completely customize your ships you're gonna be able to customize your tech trees uh but then ex politics and this is where you're gonna to get to the action cards and the action cards are, are they're, they're, they're action cards they they do awesome actiony stuff and it's just right now i just feel like i'm telling you hey there's more stuff in this 4x game but that that and i'm not even at the second half of the page so I'm, I'm gonna try. You want to, can you give me like a filler so, minute? So the yeah, the uh, action cards. It didn't seem like you were gonna have a giant handful of action cards. It seemed like you were gonna have like three or four, maybe five tops. Uh, and, and so you're not like having this clunky. Uh, I don't know what to do because I have so many options here. It's like, uh, and then you discard down to your hand limit, I believe. Uh, so yeah, that's the action card. Oh, your government! You're it? gonna choose your government at the beginning of the game. We totally forgot. So you're gonna choose your character race, but then you're also gonna choose your government, which is gonna impact whether or not you're peaceful oh, or whether yeah. or not you get your authoritarian or egalitarian. Yes. So if you're, I mean, I I have made a list that literally was like the, my top ten Twilight Imperium races. It's like so I love digging into the weeds and getting into the nuance, and this is gonna let you do it. Uh, it's going to have really cool components. It's gonna have these this clip system where you're gonna be putting it on your planets and keeping track of stuff. Uh, puzzle. Oh, puzzle piece connectors. That's really cool too. So if you're playing some games, it's like oh oh, bump the board goes everywhere. It's yeah, annoying. There's little spaces between stuff and. Yeah, stuff this, gets dri dropped down in between the tiles. This one is going to have uh, this is such a this is such a small feature. Like, why don't you mention something more important? But I think it's cool. <laughs> uh, they got puzzle piece system where you're actually going to be able to put the pieces in there, so they're not going to just go everywhere. Which I just think, once again, it's just you can tell that the designer of this game loves 4x games. Like all these, like everything on here is just a little tiny little yeah. aspect, and when you put them all together, it's like wow. Like this, this game, this game could really be a huge contender because they mentioned Twilight Imperium quite a few times they and they were like, all right, so the way we see it is playing through a legacy of this is pretty much like playing a long game of uh, Twilight Imperium because it's generally, you're going to play about six games if you really want to. And so what we, they tried to do was they tried to break down that experience more into six two hour games to make it much more accessible. Like when we get this and we're doing a preview. So, th oh, that, and I didn't mention this is a paid preview. Totally mentioned, I mean, I feel like that's obvious, but um, this seems like they had a game that you could get it out, and it, I don't know, it just has legs. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about it. Okay, uh, you, your workers, of course, they can also upgrade. You're going to have your special leaders, but eventually they will die as you use them more, so then it becomes... <laughs> that, that was very interesting. Yeah, it was very interesting. Well, they get super powerful, but then they're more likely to die because they're old. They're wise. <laughs> uh, trickling new mechanics on cards. Oh, that was the other thing, too. They did. Oh, my gosh. So this, this is something I absolutely want to mention. They pretty much said that they didn't want to front load people with mechanisms and iconography at the front, which I imagine they still will, but luckily you have four giant player references for yeah, every time they you tell take you the action. exactly what it's yeah. doing. Um, but the way they're going to introduce new mechanisms is by trickling in the cards, and it's going to be read the text on the cards pretty much, which I love when games do that because it means, oh, we can get up and going. It's like, what, is it, what does this mean? Well, it's like read the text on the card. And it's like, so I always like when they do that. Uh, we have events, we have anomalies you'll discover, uh, the key and lock looks cool as hell. I just wrote that with <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it does. And also, uh, when you're doing that key and lock, uh, so like you might find the proper card that opens a certain, that, that allows you to advance another, another card and, and do a special thing, but it might have an extra action at the bottom that if you are egalitarian if you are a particular you have a particular trait you can do a like a super action basically like a third different option than the two that are listed and, and uh it was a lot of like i don't know it to me it felt like the story was really driving what was going on there because the the event cards uh 
it goes for, you know, like you're basically doing an event and then it goes on to the next step of it and then the next step of it. And it's, it's just like this tree of oh, um, decisions that you've made and you realize, oh, when I made this decision, you know, two games ago, that's why this particular, uh, you know, event is happening. You know, this is why it's happening. And, and it's creating things in the world. It, it, like, it just sounded so amazing. It really did. Mm. One thing I do want to mention, this is more of a back-end kind of thing, but they are working with Paradox Entertainment. Uh, they, they have the full support of Paradox Entertainment, which I know means probably a lot to a lot of people. And in fact, they mentioned how a couple things were pulled straight from the game. Like the character creation. And I've never played Stellaris. I, I don't think you have either. I, right? I tried it. I tried it for one night and it was... It was <laughs> it was over my head. I can deal with you know. I can deal with that in board games, but not Honestly, so much. Though, listening games. to this made me want to go and try the game. <laughs> I, I agree. I actually downloaded it again. Um, so the other thing that I want to talk about there's there's, a couple, there's only like three or four more things that are super cool that I need to talk about. Uh, combat seemed very simple and clean, yes. which excites me. And they they said they wanted combat to happen more consistently because if you, you play Twilight Imperium, it's like, yeah, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. And it's like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go grab a sandwich while you yeah. guys have this battle. So combat's one round. And there are uh, like five layers, I think it was. It was like long range, mid range, mm -hmm. short range, uh, and then maybe four layers. And then rapid fire. And so you start at long range and you work your way forward and whatever ships are at medium range, fire at medium range and you hit the other person however close they are to you. And at the end of that, you know, long range to, to rapid fire, whoever is damaged the most or dead the most uh, retreats. So there's not a back and forth. There's not a continuous like, oh yeah, I, I rolled... 10 dice and I didn't hit anything and oh you rolled 10 dice and you didn't hit anything all right well let's do it all again that that doesn't happen and yes. it's a one one dice roll it seems one really dice clean roll. and clear and, uh, and, and uh, you got me excited about what it was Keep going. very very interesting though and so you roll one die and that's what determines uh like how much you hit and uh like the the defenses and stuff really it sounded amazing it sounded well thought out and like Someone that disliked sitting there and, you know, risk back for, back and forth for, you know, 20 minutes to do one battle. That's not hyperbole either. Yeah. Like, we've had combats like that. Yeah. Uh, so, but but you actually, I did the excited hand clap because you got me remembering the thing which was that ne getting destroyed isn't necessarily the end of the world because you have a very finite amount of resources they could spend. And they actually have a really cool resource system where it's not you spend the resources, but you flip it over to say that it's exhausted and tapped, which I like. I like that a lot. Uh, but, so let's say you have like this huge ship, but that huge ship is going to take one of a particular resource over and over and over every single turn. But if it gets destroyed, then you get that resource back every turn so you can allocate it to a different location. And it it just makes freaking sense, and I liked it. <laughs> All right, uh, anything else we, we've got to get into? I'm looking. Oh, the fourth game! Yes, yeah, so every fourth game, it throws it up, and it turns it into, like, a semi-cooperative affair as you're going to be dealing with a galactic crisis. And it's like, that, you don't need that in the game. That's yeah. completely unnecessary, yeah. but that's awesome! Like, it's like, there's more stuff in there. It reminds me of uh, Game of Thrones, like, when the wildlings attack. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... It, and, and there were so many times while they were talking about this that I thought of other games that it's like, oh yeah, that part that I really like about that game, that's what he's talking about right now. I also wrote down that Crisis Evolve, which sounds awesome, and I don't, I don't even remember what that means. Does that make any sense? I, Crisis uh, Evolve. I, I think when it ha after it happens the first time, like oh, you yeah. might change it in a certain way based on what the happens. next time it comes. Yeah, the next time it comes up, it might be a little bit different. And, and so I just want to give you. One example that we, we kind of got a glimpse was, which was like, it was an event that happened where you, it was like, oh, do you want to send out uh, a message beacon to this person? It's going to cost you some, but it might potentially do good. And depending on what you do, if you get a card later in the game, and it might be next game, it might be two or three games down the line, it'll be like, oh yeah, you finally got that radio transmission back from them, and X, Y, and Z is happening. And it's just... As a gamer, that excites me so much because that's the kind of stuff that normally we only see frequently in video games because it's just hard logistically to do in board games. But I, 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 I'm excited about this. Yeah, I am super excited. Uh, do you think it's going to be shirt ripping good? Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant on uh, how the uh, system where it's like one, one person's going to come in, like the drop in drop and in, drop, drop out. out. Yeah, so 
Uh, if that if that turns out to be as good as they're making it sound like it is, then yeah, this is gonna be shirt ripping good. It might it might replace our Twilight Imperium. Uh, you know, regular. That was, that yeah, fail. you just ruined that shirt. Well, the, the, the shirt <laughs> was to be. I just need to take this this Bosun's Edge blade, give it a little cutsy. Uh, but yeah, this is coming to Kickstarter very, very soon. And actually, they they gave me a Kickstarter link down below, and if you click on it, I get like shirt. Shirt. <laughs> shirt yeah, ripping. I think it'll be. I don't know. I'm plenty of, but it looks. There's shirt in my mouth. It looks shirt ripping good. <laughs> So, if that looks like it might be a cup of tea, be sure to check that one out down on the Kickstarter link down below, or just on any Kickstarter link. I really don't care. I just love seeing more epic 4X meaty space games out there, because if you play this, you might you might be... Well, anywho, looks like it might be good. Be sure to check that one out. Also, if you're enjoying what we're doing, echo my hands. <laughs> sure click on that subscribe button down below as I'm trying to reach 9,000 subscribers. Celebrate my nine-year anniversary of making YouTube content. As always, thanks for your time, YouTube. I gotta work on the short ripping. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um...